triple evac or triple evacuation. You're going to hear this term throughout your career and also in the EPA test. There's a lot of misconceptions about the triple evacuation method. And what we essentially do is we're using nitrogen. We push nitrogen through, we pull a vacuum, we push nitrogen through, we pull a vacuum, we push nitrogen through, we pull a vacuum. We do that three times, then we pull down to a deep vacuum. Again, our ultimate goal is to make sure we're down below 500 microns or even 200 microns. Whatever our goal is, make sure we're down low and clean, dry, and tight. Once we're down around 200 microns, we know there's no moisture left in that system to worry about. So whether we pull it with two hoses, a single hose, four hoses, the three-port manifold set, or we do the triple evacuation nitrogen, the goal is to make sure we get all the moisture out of that system. Moisture causes acid, moisture causes copper plating, moisture causes refrigerant leaks. So we want to get that moisture out. Now the triple evacuation method is one of those methods. If you remember every single example I did, I ran and purged nitrogen through the system before I pulled a vacuum. Essentially that's what we're doing a triple evacuation except we're doing that three different times. Now there's a lot of people that have misconceptions about what triple evacuation does. A lot of people think because this is dry nitrogen, and it is dry nitrogen, there's no moisture in here whatsoever, it's dry nitrogen, they think the nitrogen is going to absorb the moisture. And unfortunately that is not true and it's not the case. So so if we run nitrogen through here, it's not absorbing moisture at all. There's two things that nitrogen is doing. The main and most important thing is it's helping push or loosen up those water molecules, that water vapor, and help push it out of the system. That's one of the most important things. The second thing is if we have the very, very, very unlikely event that some of the moisture could freeze, which is extremely unlikely, it's only going to really be seen in commercial applications. We have water-cooled condensers and there was a big leak when we have liquid, a volume of liquid water in there, then the nitrogen pressure raises it up, allows that H2O to melt back into a liquid, but it's not going to absorb any moisture at all. Another problem is if we put too much nitrogen pressure during our triple evacuation, the water vapor that's already loose will actually condense back into a liquid on the surfaces inside these coils. So we make sure that we keep that pressure low. So a lot of people get very upset when we talk about triple evacuation and they start hearing these things such as nitrogen doesn't absorb water. They get very upset about it. In the description below, I'm gonna put an article from Jeremy Smith. Now Jeremy is an excellent, amazing person working with refrigeration, commercial refrigeration, supermarket refrigeration. He is a genius. If you ever get the chance, listen to what he has to say because he has a massive amount of experience. And it's not just using his experience talking about triple evacuation, it's also he goes into the math and the science behind the nitrogen nitrogen molecules, pressure, the refrigerant, all of this inside the system, the moisture, how it all works together and comes out with the conclusion that triple evacuation doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way, even though it's very popular and people talk about it all the time. So be sure to read that article. It has all the details that I'm leaving out. It has a massive amount of information. Now, a side note, I'm not saying to not do triple evacuation. If a manufacturer says to do triple evacuation, then by all means, do triple evacuation. It's not going to hurt anything. It just takes a whole lot of extra time that I feel is somewhat unnecessary. Now, triple evacuation can also help reset your micron gauge. So Brian Orr has a really cool article talking about the differences between triple evacuation and when not to use triple evacuation. He has the pros and cons. I'm also gonna put that article in the description as well. With triple evacuation, we could do it with every single demonstration I've done in the past. However, I'm gonna do it with this demonstration because it's simply the easiest way to follow through. I have my nitrogen tank with a flow regulator, so I can put a very small flow of nitrogen through here. I did add an extra valve right here just for simplicity so I can close this off, it's vacuum rated. It's not 100% necessary, but I do like to be able to control it. That one single hose, this is just for nitrogen and vacuum, so it's my hose that I keep clean. It's going over here to my liquid side of the system. And I got my little ball valve over here so I can control that flow. So this is just very simply from the nitrogen secondary regulator through the hose to the high pressure side. Now on the suction side, I have my vacuum rated core removal tool. From there, I have the very large hose going to my vacuum pump. I have another core removal tool on the side port of the first one. From there, on the side port of that one, I've added a pressure. This is different from how we've done it in the past. Because I'm pushing nitrogen through, I wanna make sure I don't have too much pressure. So I need to be able to read that pressure and that's where this pressure gauge is gonna come in handy. From there, I have my valve and then from my valve, I have my micron gauge. The valve allows me to isolate the micron gauge. So as I'm flowing nitrogen through, I can close off this valve and I'm not pushing any moisture or oil or refrigerant or anything else into my micron gauge. I like to keep my micron gauge clean, dry, and tight. 
What I found in the past before I started adding this little extra valve, I ended up having to clean my micron gauge very often. I'd use alcohol in it, go through all the process, clean it out, run it on a vacuum pump, and I was having micron gauges fail more often than I would like. Ever since I started using this extra valve on here, I've never had a problem with it. I haven't had to clean this micron gauge ever since I started using it with this valve. So I personally really am a big fan of using some kind of a vacuum rated valve. Some people also get very nervous about having more fittings. The more fittings are more chances for leaks. And that is essentially true. That's why I'm using this product called Nylog. I have no connection with Nylog whatsoever. I learned about this from Brian Orr, started using it, and it really made a difference. When I put this on the connection, it helps the connection seal. It's made of refrigerant oil. You have the blue one that's used for PLE oil and the red one you use for mineral oil. So it's made of refrigerant oil, but it just makes a nice soft seal. And again, this goes on the outside connections, so it's not going to be getting into the piping. And even if it was, it's not going to flow with the vacuum. So it's not going to cause any contamination in the system. Although I'm pretty sure I could put this literally in the system and it still wouldn't cause any contamination issues, but it's a great way to seal it. So even though I have all these extra connections, the, this product, which I am not affiliated with whatsoever, I just use it and I believe in it, helps make these connections where they don't leak. So I don't have to worry about all these extra connections. Here I put this extra connection here just so that we can see the micron gauge. I'm not worried about it because I have the Nylog product on there that helps make a really good gasket seal. So let's get started with this process. To start off with, I'm gonna leave the cap loose right here on my vacuum pump. So that cap is loose. I'm gonna leave the valve off to my micron gauge, but I'm gonna leave the valve open right here through the large vacuum hose to my vacuum pump. I'm gonna have the valve open right here, and it goes all the way back to my nitrogen tank where this valve is open. So we're gonna use high pressure nitrogen. I'm going to make sure my valve is backed out. I'm going to open my nitrogen tank. And I'm very slowly going to increase, by turning this in, increase the pressure to my secondary regulator. Here we can hear a slight flow of nitrogen. I can feel the nitrogen flowing out right here. Very soft amount of nitrogen. On the side, I can actually adjust this little ball right here, and I can increase or decrease the flow of my nitrogen. So from there, I just set it out of the top side, the ball's just bouncing around, and I'm just free flowing. You can just do this for a few minutes. The more moisture you have in there, the more potential moisture, the longer you have it. If I have a water-cooled condenser and I had a leak in there and I had to fix that, and I think there's a possibility that there's H2O in there, then I'll run this for 10 or 15 minutes even to push out as much of that moisture as I possibly can. As I'm flowing nitrogen through, you can see there's 0.0 PSI. I can increase this pressure flow and we'll see we're still not reading any pressure. If I hold this back, now you'll see the pressure starting to build up inside the lines. And really we don't want any pressure, we just want at the most two to five PSI. If I put my thumb here, we see that it does build pressure up in that system. That's not what we want. We just want to flow nitrogen through. That's way too much, way more than I need. I'm just flowing nitrogen through. I can just back this off, and right here is just right. And that's a nice, slow flow of nitrogen. So now we're ready for our first vacuum. So what I'm gonna do is close off this valve because I don't need my nitrogen, and I'm gonna put this cap back on my vacuum pump. So now our system is completely sealed. We see there's zero PSI inside the lines. There's just barely any nitrogen that flowed out. So there's still nitrogen in the system, but it's a very small amount. I'm gonna open the valve to my micron gauge. We can start reading what kind of vacuum we're pulling. And we're gonna turn this pump on. We're gonna pull down to say about 2,000 microns the first time. We hit 7,000 microns. I'm gonna close off my gas ballast. So we're at 1,000 microns. We're gonna close off my micron gauge again. This protects my micron gauge. And what I'm gonna do is shut my pump off. Then I can open up the valve from my nitrogen tank. Now nitrogen is flowing into the system. It's adding pressure to the system. It's also disrupting or moving around those water molecules. And we'll start to see that our pressure will rise. We don't want to go above say two or even a maximum of say five PSI. In the unlikely event that there was going to be any ice, it would allow that ice to melt, but it's very unlikely again for that to happen. So now we're at five PSI, I can close off my nitrogen tank. So now that my nitrogen tank shut off, we can leave this there for a few minutes. What I'm gonna do is open up this port right here and we're gonna hear that nitrogen bleed out. I'm gonna leave this open. This is gonna allow that nitrogen to purge out. So the first nitrogen loosened all those molecules up. This nitrogen is gonna push that water vapor out. Again, to how long you should do this really depends on how much moisture is in that system. In this case, there's not very much moisture in there at all, so we really don't have much to worry about, and it's unlikely it'll have too much moisture. So we're just purging, just 
pushing that nitrogen through that system. Again, by having this valve shut off, it prevents any oil or any contaminants being pushed by micron gauge. So it's a really big benefit. I can see here, I don't have any pressure showing up whatsoever. And so now I'm ready to start my vacuum again. So this will be the second evacuation. So I'm going to go ahead and close this off. I still have a very small flow of nitrogen before it stops. I wanna have this cap back on. So now I have just nitrogen in the system, almost no PSI whatsoever, We're not even really reading. So I'm gonna turn my pump on. I wanna lose, loosen my gas ballast. I'm gonna turn the pump on. And I'm waiting for this to start pulling into a bit of a vacuum. So we're in a decent amount of vacuum. I'm gonna open my micron gauge back up. And I'm gonna run it like this until we get down under 10,000 microns. Now that we're reading numbers on our micron gauge, we're under 10,000 microns. I'm gonna close this gas ballast off. We can hear the pump change the sound. And now we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait for this micron gauge to pull down to a thousand microns. Once we get down to a thousand microns, we'll do the same process again. Now we're below a thousand microns here. So we're gonna do that same process yet again. I'm gonna close off my micron gauge to protect it from the nitrogen. I'm gonna go ahead and shut my pump off and I'm going to open the valve from a nitrogen tank. Now we're gonna allow nitrogen to flow into the system. That nitrogen molecule is gonna disrupt any of that water vapor molecules. It's gonna push it around. We're not even to positive pressure because the nitrogen is still breaking the vacuum. We're just simply replacing that vacuum with nitrogen until we end up with the same PSI of nitrogen as there in the air, which is zero PSI. And we're gonna add a little bit more just above zero, but anywhere between three to five PSI is what you look for. We don't wanna go more than that because we don't wanna condense that water vapor back into a liquid and take longer. So we're just gonna wait till that gets to about three to five PSI. So over here at three PSI, I can just take this loose. We hear the pressure flow through. We see this pressure gauge start to drop. But again, this is still open. So I'm just flowing nitrogen, very softly flowing nitrogen through this system. I can feel the nitrogen just barely pushing out right here. That's what we want. We just want to push out into that water vapor. How long you run this, everybody has a different opinion. Some people say 10 minutes, some people say five minutes, some people say a couple of minutes. We're just gonna run it through just for a short period of time. So you see the example, and we're just pushing or flowing nitrogen out. Now that we're done with that step, I'm gonna close off my nitrogen, but I still have a very small flow for a short period of time. I'm gonna close this cap back off. So no moisture's in this system whatsoever. All we have in here is pure, clean, dry nitrogen. So the next thing is we're gonna do a triple vac. This is the third time of pulling a vacuum. I'm gonna open my gas ballast, start my vacuum pump up again for the third time. I'm waiting for my main gauge to start showing some vacuum. I'm showing 20 inches of mercury here. So I'm just going to open up my micron gauge. Now I'm reading microns again. And at this point, we're gonna pull the vacuum all the way down. I'm completely done with my nitrogen tank. What I'm gonna do is close off my nitrogen tank, so I'm done with it. Nitrogen tank's closed, this valve's closed. I'm gonna slowly release this. Now it's under some pressure, so it's gonna be not easy to turn. And now we're down below 10,000 microns. I'm gonna close off that gas ballast. And here's another reason I like having this valve. So I now have a vacuum all the way through to this point and I can take it off my nitrogen tank without having any contamination in there. Put my nitrogen tank away. I bring out my refrigerant tank. I go ahead and thread that same connector back on my refrigerant tank. Turn my refrigerant tank upside down. Take my scale, turn it on and tear or zero it out so it's ready to go when I need it. And now we just wait for vacuums to pull down to a nice deep vacuum. And what's cool about this, I'm pulling a vacuum all the way to this hose, all the way to this point here, so there's gonna be no contamination when we're done. So now down to 383 microns, we're ready to start the system. So I'm gonna close off the valve to my vacuum pump. This isolates it all the way to this point, so I can shut my pump off. Now we can do our decay test. Our micron gauge is still connected to the system side and we've isolated our vacuum pump and our hose separate. So we just wait for the decay test 15 minutes. We wrote through that same cycle. Once the decay test is done, I'm gonna close off my micron gauge and I'm going to charge liquid refrigerant straight into that liquid line, just like we did before. And now we have positive pressure in the system. Once we weigh in our refrigerant, put however much we need in, then we can go back to our typical charging methods. But that's the triple evacuation method. Now there's another method very similar to the triple evacuation method. So we're gonna go through that method just real quick next.